All right, guys. Hey, welcome to the stories from the road. Some of these stories that we're gonna try to attempt to tell you, <laughs> some of them are true. This actually happened to us while out here on the road. Some are stories that you know have been told to us, and some are that we've read uh, with a little attempt of mild humor. <laughs> well, tell us down below what you guys think of the story and other stories that we're gonna try to tell here. Um, if you're interested in telling your story about here on the road, my email's down below. It has to be a good story. Yeah. Yeah, I would say mainly, I mean, stories from the road, you know. Some of you people that may watch may not be truckers, but still have stories of out here that's crazy things that's happened. That you've been traveling or something like and that. And we got some crazy stories. That's for sure. <laughs> Alright, let's get started. Alright, so the, uh, one of the stories that comes to mind, which was kind of a crazy thing that happened, and uh, I'm not saying it happened to everyone, but it's happened to a lot of us. But uh, I first started driving in 2015, and when, you know, obviously being from Florida, Florida boy, we ain't used to driving in the snow. And the first, like, real, well, it was the first winter that I, you know, besides being in Florida, that's not really a winter, but, you know, I got stuck out in the winter drive when I was at Warner. I was still a company driver and <laughs> this was a pretty big storm. It came through um, oh gosh where did it go through? I think I want to say it was like going through Iowa and uh, I had picked it picked it up the day, the day prior and and it wasn't really a long run. It was only like probably I'm just going to guess probably like 400 miles like it was a day trip you know and it was one of those it was delivered to a Walmart DC so what we had to do is obviously you know pick up you know I picked up the day prior and deliver it I think it was like a like a 9 a.m. delivery or some crap like that you know simple drop and hook but you know Walmart's you know if, if you're late you never know you know sometimes they'll take you sometimes they won't you know they could make you wait another day but that was the only thing with Warner it never really bothered me about being late because if you can't deliver it, then they'll just have, you know, just go, you know, drop it in one of our drop yards. So, so a massive store, snowstorm had came through the night before. And, uh, when I woke up in the morning, it was just like, you know, snow everywhere. And by that time I only had like, uh, maybe like another 250 left to drive. And I remember I called the fleet manager and by this time I'd only been driving all together maybe three or four months, if that. So I remember I called up my fleet manager and he told me, I told him, I said, hey man, I'm gonna be late. The snowstorm came through, blah, blah, blah. Then he proceeded to tell me, well, you know, well, you know, we gotta get this thing delivered. So I'm like, oh gosh, oh, okay. So, you know, so I got out and started doing my pre-trip, got out and took off. And once I got onto the road, it was, it was just it's like, legitimate straight shot down the interstate like don't don't get off you just you know about the first three hours of driving about 35 miles an hour you know it, was, you know, it went from two to three lanes but there was only one lane all the other lanes were just snowed out you know you, you couldn't go in there so it was just a line of trucks doing like 30 35 down the highway Occasionally, you'd see, you know, a truck off in the ditch, truck in the median, you know. For me, that was, you know, pretty bad, you know. I was, I don't want to say I was scared or terrified, but it was a, a lot of white knuckle driving for a while. And probably, like, the scariest point was, you know, I was talking to, talking to the missus here on the phone. And we came up to a point where after driving, like, three and a half, almost four hours, it's like, you know, I, I got to get out of this truck, you know. It's like, you know, by this time, it's it's, it's after 2 o'clock, almost 3 o'clock. So I'm like five, six hours late already, you know. So I was like, I got to get out of the truck. You know, just, I, I need, I need, you know, like, you know, your nerves or, you know, uh, I got to get out of the truck. So I, just, you know, I and looked on the trucker path and there was like, you know, I can't remember, TA or a Petro coming up. And I'm coming up, and I said, well, if everyone, if anybody gets off, I'll just follow them so I can, you know, just, you know, follow their ruts. 
So we uh, we get to the exit. Nobody gets off. And I was like, oh man. So yeah, you know, I'm, I'm talking to her on the phone. And we come up to the next the, the next. It's probably like five miles down. And here comes the loves. So finally, one dude he he jumps off. So I was like, ooh, ooh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm getting off. I'm getting off. So I, like, well, this time you're slowing down, you know, and I'm, you know, a little Freightliner I had, you know, we're doing like five miles an hour getting off on this little exit. And the more you get off on the exit, the more you see like the, the plows never came through. The snow is, you can hear the snow up underneath, like in the wheel wells and stuff like that. Which was like me. It's like, oh my gosh! I was like, what's going on? You know, the, 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 you know, and the guy in front of me, like, you, we came off the exit, and, it, and like, it, you know, curves right, and he just slowly, just, just went left, and just right off. He 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 didn't like wipe out or nothing, but he just he just went off into the grass and stopped. You know, because he just had no traction. So here I come. I was like, oh crap! So I tried to follow his ruts and. Then, then there was no ruts. There was nothing. So then I just made my own. And when I, the loves, like when you come off the exit, you know, like you, you curve right. And when you get to the intersection, the loves is just right. I mean, you just straight through the intersection and there's the loves, fuel entrance. So I come up to the intersection, talking on the phone. And what happens? He's like, I start, I'm sliding, I'm sliding, I'm sliding. And then all of a sudden the phone goes dead. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know, just crazy. The most wrong time to lose signal, you know. I came up to the intersection and there was, you know, the snow was starting to hit the bumper. And it was just like, you know, it was starting to slow me down. And it was for a second thinking if I stop, I could get stuck. I just creeping up to the intersection and there's no one coming right you know i had a red light no one's coming no one's around and i ran the red light i just right through the intersection straight you know like when you get in the fuel aisle it's like a little bump it's like boom 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 you know here i come into the parking lot and i remember when i came to the fuel island you know i went to stop and then like then the trailers like start topping like you know i had no traction I was like, oh my gosh, for a second I'm thinking I'm gonna plow into these freaking fuel islands. And then I just, then it just, it caught and I just, I creeped right through the fuel island and stopped and just sat there in my truck for like 15 minutes. And, and the whole time now, he hasn't called me back. Yeah. And so I'm sitting on the other end going, oh crap, he's <laughs> hit something, somebody's hit him, he slid off in the ditch, something, I don't know, I'm freaking out. And then finally he calls back and he's like, I'm fine. I'm like, this is not a good day. So we did our break and, you know, and I was debating like what I wanted to do. So before I can even call, the fleet manager calls me. I say, hey man, you know, they, he, they know where you are. They, you know, you just, you know, you know oh, I just want to see how you're doing, you know, where, where you're at and everything. And, and I told him where I was at. He's like, all right, good. I think at this point I still had like, like maybe like a hundred miles to go, you know. And and he's like, all right, well, just you know. And I, I and I, I was trying to tell him like, hey man, these roads are pretty bad, you know. And like, I don't know if I can make it. And all right, man, you'll be fine. You're fine. Just you know, call us if you need it. You know, click, and that was it. And I was like, so now I'm like, damn, if I don't get this thing delivered, you know, I'm gonna get fired. You know, I mean, this is. I've never, this is my first like winter driving. I've only been out of here like three months. I'm like, rookie, you know, that was right here. I was the guy, you know, I didn't know what to do. Keep on driving. So, you know, we got back on the road and I finally, we got, I got to the Walmart. And <laughs> come to find out, you know, I didn't know all this cause I'm still, you know, rookie. They had like a huge open window yeah, I could have waited, but I, I was more afraid of like, oh my gosh, they're gonna get fired. And I, I remember I pulled in, and you know, they, they, you know, you know how if you were delivered to a Walmart, you know, drop it in section H or whatever, you know. So I dropped my trailer, and then I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't get the trailer, you know, I couldn't. The landing gear was like 
because it's all frozen and full of ice and then the fifth wheel wouldn't detach and it was just you know finally after our, about 15 minutes of messing around with it I got it and I dropped the trailer and I hooked up to an empty and I just sat there and I was just like in my mind I was like this is probably like top five stupidest things you've ever done you know and just from there on out and there was a couple times it happened after that with with Warner and then I'm not saying it was Warner's fault because in the end I was the one driving you know after that I knew I'm the captain up here if I if I don't feel safe then I ain't gonna do it and that's like I can say to other people you know maybe if you're someone new that's watching this just remember you're you're the captain up here if you don't feel safe that's all you got to do is you throw the safe word out one time and then we'll have no problem and if they tell you to drive then maybe it's time to look for another company but I knew from there on out I wasn't gonna drive in that crap anymore I've driven some questionable things but that being my first time that was pretty scary and scary for her somehow losing signal at the most un I don't even know. That was that was pretty bad. Pretty crazy story. Ended up everything turned out good. You know, no problems. It could have got worse. It could have been. I could have been one of those guys in the median, flipped over. You know, crazy, 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 crazy. crazy stories out here on the road. You never know what you're gonna, what's gonna happen to you. But uh, that's our first story. So uh, tell us what you think down below. You know, good, bad. If you got a story you want to tell. Just let me know. Send me an email. You know, I can't tell your story. You gotta tell it yourself. So, so let me know what you guys think, and we'll see you on the next stories from the road. Bye. Oh. Okay, this is where I gotta cut here because I don't know. I forgot what I was gonna say.